If one student can change a community, imagine what 31 can do. We're really eager to see what you guys can do to help the city engage more with its citizens in different ways. 31 students, 10 projects, one semester. I think with citizen involvement, communication is the key. So there are many more cities the size of Jackson than there are cities the size of Chicago. But because Chicago has the resources and the scale, we see a lot of innovation there and we really want to see how scalable that is to this wide berth of cities that are much more like Jackson across the United States. Provide context to students to identify problems and propose solutions to meet information needs in local communities. So can we, for instance, fundamentally change what it means to be a citizen of a local area by providing new opportunities to access both the citizen government and each other through these information technologies. That's the core of what we're trying to accomplish here. By working hand in hand with the University of Michigan School of Information, the city of Jackson is on the road to positive two-way information sharing with its residents. Like many cities faced with a loss of industry and declining property values, Jackson struggles with blighted buildings. Residents need to know where the buildings are, who owns them, and whether the city is going to demolish them. Now, ultimately what this means is that citizens and government aren't on the same page when it comes to blight removal. And as a result, citizens have mistakenly and unknowingly purchased condemned properties and have to spend large amounts of time retrieving and reporting information on blighted properties by directly calling City Hall. Well, the, the plan for today is to dig a little bit deeper into the information flows that happen within the city and also visit some blighted properties uh, so we can get a sense for the problem we're actually working on here. My concerns are uh, the city is not notifying the people about tearing down or demoing the houses. The house right behind me that they started tearing down today, the guy just bought that house about a month and a half, two months ago on an online auction. And the gentleman lives over in Arizona. He probably don't even know that that property he just bought two months ago is being demoed. Although neighbors thought an Arizona resident bought this house before it was demolished, that turned out not to be the case. The CID project can help dispel such misconceptions. And here's how we're gonna change that. So we've developed a property report webpage that contains all the summary statistics for Blight and Jackson in addition to all the progress that's being done with it. Urban planners tell you it's essential to have a consistent, well-thought-out guide for development. Such a master plan designates areas for commercial, industrial, residential, and other uses. Master plans evolve, and Jackson officials want residents to speak up as the plan evolves. So we're working um, on the master plan citizen interaction process, and we're targeting the 18 to 30 year old demographic trying to figure out why they aren't currently invested in the master planning process, how we could incentivize them to participate, and what mediums we could encourage them to participate through. Major construction disrupts residents and businesses alike. Ripping up the main artery through the city and rebuilding takes months. Rather than simply lament the project, city officials decide to try something novel, make the construction zone an attraction worth seeing. Chris and I are working on the construction exhibit project. So the problem is that they're gonna dig a 30 foot, one block hole in downtown and then move that hole through the entire downtown through the course of several months. So we're trying to turn this into a well-connected to the city and interactive, historical, even draw to the downtown to keep flow up, to keep people coming downtown and to keep them happy even though we're tearing up their downtown. <laughs> State law requires child immunizations to prevent disease outbreaks in schools. Health departments face the problem of tracking who has been vaccinated. 
Not all parents properly report that their children have received their required and recommended immunizations. And our goal is to increase the number of children that are getting their recommended and required vaccines each year in Jackson. So originally, we hoped to work with the students on the rates of our adolescents and the recommended immunizations. We have a, a database that keeps track of the immunizations of children of all ages in the state of Michigan, and we were going to utilize that database with them to look at the kids, the adolescents in the county, and think of ways to get our message to them and to build up those rates. We had hoped to get the students uh, access to the database, but we couldn't do that. With HIPAA rules and privacy laws, we, we couldn't get them access to the database. In talking with the students, we utilize social media a little bit with the health department and with the immunization clinic. We have a marketing committee and a social media committee and we wondered if they would meet with us and give us ideas of how to better utilize social media. So what we ended up creating was a kind of a comprehensive social media plan, hopefully something that can allow them to uh, uh, create a, an online community that's as cohesive and friendly as the real life community that Jackson county actually gets to share. I think that in the current situation that a lot of cities find themselves in, that we can't be afraid to experiment and we can't be afraid to find new and innovative ways to interact and communicate with our citizens. We are trying to encourage citizens from the city of Jackson to use the Blackboard Connect system. Uh, Jackson Connect is based on Blackboard Connect and it allows for the city officials to send out messages using phone, text, and email. There's a number of benefits to it. It, it can help keep citizens more informed about what events are going on, keep them notified about emergency situations. So what we're going to want is we're going to want to have the Blackboard system be used internally, have, have everyone educated on how they can use it internally, as well as how to educate our citizens to why this is an important product that we are providing. We can improve citizen engagement. We can improve the way that people feel about how the government works. We need a way to get people involved and feel like they're a part of that effort instead of reacting to that effort. The city of Jackson is set for the future. We discovered that we were having a difficult time getting information in from some of the people. We had witnesses or people that had knowledge about some of the criminal activity that were reluctant to come forward and give the information to the police department or to our officers who were responding to the scene. And right now, we're really focused on an anonymous tip submission system. So at the citizen end, they'll be able to text anonymously uh, any information they might have relating to crimes to the police. And then from the police end, they'll be receiving that information and we're creating an interface and a system so that they can organize the information and really just have an easy way to access it. The grad students from U of M been wonderful to work with. They've been working very hard and the process is progressing rapidly and we're already uh, prepared to see our first sample text system. So I'm looking forward to that and uh, hopefully we'll be up and running and be able to, to see how well it's working and if it's uh, a viable product for us. There's a lot of geographical data available uh, that the city has collected. 
but the public doesn't really have access to it at the moment. So we're trying to figure out how to prioritize the data, what the public would most like to know, and then how to give them uh, access to that through an effective media. Make other data interactive to all citizens. One of the exciting things that we did was we got to talk to librarians at the Jackson District Library, and they were speaking to how citizens could actually use maps, and so we got some great ideas of what people would actually be interested in looking at. And so now we feel that we'll be able to create an interactive website with the maps that actually has content that people will want to explore. And that was pretty exciting for us. So the Jackson Area Transit Authority faces a problem for which they're trying to find a way to better distribute information about how the buses run, where they run, and when they run. We're gonna help fix this problem by implementing better graphics. They're a professional group of students. They've engaged ideas that I hadn't thought of, and they're assertive in the sense that one day I wasn't able to be with them, so they rode the bus by themselves. They went out and talked to customers and cleaned information all on their own. So I've really enjoyed the process. Well, it's my experience from looking at different cemeteries around the country that they've lost so many records over the years. The old records are starting to crumble. If they can preserve it in a way that people can find it, I, I just think it's a great thing. So the problem that we are dealing with is mainly an information management and organizational issue. A byproduct of that is providing access to the organized data to the citizens of Jackson. Much of the cemetery's information is in old deed books and log books that really show how these are not in a sustainable condition. And so we've gone out and we've started contacting experts in scanning and preserving rare books. And we have looked at what would happen once these are scanned. And so we think that once they're scanned, the images can then be used as a reference point, And then the books can be put into a safer place like a local museum. So we're trying to create an open data policy for the city of Jackson. We're hoping to place a lot of the data sets that people are interested in looking at uh, online, which would be available obviously for free for citizens, but it also would be a lot less of a time burden on the city employees. What we're going to be talking about today are actual projects that a class of 31 students have been working on this term in a master's level course at the School of Information. This is a group of students who are masters in the science of information, masters in urban planning, masters in health informatics, and a few undergraduates, raise your hand undergrads just to get your bad props, there you go guys, um, who have been working on these projects in tight conjunction with, the, with department heads and city officials and, and leaders within the city of Jackson, right? So we have been partners throughout these 15 weeks and, and the city and our students have been working really closely to accomplish these things. Students gave three minute presentations on the civic problem they were asked to solve. Their project exposition revealed more than just a semester of dedicated effort. It showed that an engaged city government can successfully partner with the university to find solutions that benefit the public. Next up, open data. Hi everyone, my name is James and this is my partner Jonathan and we've been working together on this uh, open data project that you've probably read about on the uh, the internets um, and we've been working The really city council has approved the first reading of the open data policy. At its second approval it will go into law and at which point um, the data policy formation can also really start beginning again. With that um, we would really like to uh, invite 
the citizens to involve themselves in open data and open government. The first adopted project was one of the least flashy of all, the Open Data Project. Jackson became the first Michigan city to formally approve such a policy. It's incredible working with bright young people that get this stuff. I mean, obviously they're far beyond me when it comes to technology and open data. I've learned a tremendous uh, amount um, with the students and I gotta tell you, even working through the open data ordinance with Scott Tenebrink and with Dr. Lampy and uh, Vice Mayor Dobies has been an incredible learning experience for me. <laughs> There's a lot happening in Jackson that nobody knows about. There's there's a new, younger group that is tired of the way things have gone in the past. You don't see it, but if you're anywhere near the vortex of what's happening, you can feel it. There's about to be a huge revolution in Jackson in a positive way. Uh, things are about ready to break loose.